Check, check, check. There check. you go. Now that works. Does it work? It works. That dude was cool. That was amazing. Hey, man. I wish more monks were like that. <laughs> um, look, I am uh, very proud uh, to be here uh, with you. Um, you know, education is everything. And uh, none of us would be here in this room if somebody hadn't given us a shot. Um, and you are uh, radically committed uh, to using new tools and technologies to help kids learn. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing. Well, first of all, it's a real honor to be here representing uh, so all the people at Verizon and, and also tough to talk about this in the context of what's going on in the world. I mean, I was hearing today about the, uh, the crisis that is, is coming in terms of uh, uh, hunger. So, but we need to look into the future, to, to, to your point. And uh, our commitment starts with the understanding that, if you think about it, the infrastructure of this century and the next one is, if you think about it, mobility, um, broadband, and then cloud. If those things are not there for people to take advantage and actually create that economic inclusion that is so needed, people won't be successful. So uh, at Verizon, we started with that. We said uh, we have to have, uh, first of all, accessibility to the technology and the telecommunications, then affordability. So we need to, even if it's accessible, if people cannot actually afford it, it won't make a difference. And then is the applications that people can use in order to take full advantage of that. Um, and Verizon Innovative Learning is um, one of the, I think, this, the things that this company is most proud of because we, uh, we always talked about not just um, being in the philanthropy business, we want to make our business to actually make a difference in the world, uh, being a responsible business. And, and I tell you, this program is now, this year is 10 years since we started. And it started, you know, a lot uh, earlier than I've been there and a lot of people at Verizon. And in a flaty world that we live in, 10 years of something is really a tremendous accomplishment, you know? That's really good. Um, yeah. Um, so what are you most proud of with, with the innovative learning program? I mean, uh, 10 years is a long time. You guys, first of all, the pandemic hit. That was not easy to deal with. How did you overcome that? What are you proudest of in, in that uh, period? I tell you, the, 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 the longevity is the biggest, uh, the biggest accomplishment. But also, uh, you see a lot of programs that try to tackle this issue about uh, technology in schools. Um, this program now uh, has affected the lives of 1.5 million kids, 500 uh, Title I schools, and continues to grow. Um, and most of the programs miss one of the three uh, key components that I think is critical to success. In some cases, you get the hardware that is needed in the hands of these kids, and 90% of the cases, if you only give them the hardware, it ends up being somewhere in a room locked in school because they're not used, they're not put to use. So you need the hardware. Then you need the connectivity, so you have to give the hardware, the connectivity that they need. We always take each of these schools for a period of two years, so they have the opportunity to really develop. And then the third piece is the curriculum. So we give the teachers, and we teach the teachers how to use that technology and that connectivity uh, to actually teach. When you have those three things together, you create a program that has tremendous uh, impact. And now after 10 years, I mean, we are working right now on a campaign with a, with a team that shows kind of like 10 years on what happens to those kids. And these were kids like 10 years ago when we started, for example, they were doing homework in the cell phones of their parents. The kids were saying that they are, they are, their fingers were hurting because they needed to write essays. Uh, I, begin, I, I remember that one of the first things that the team did, they actually put connectivity in buses that actually they will leave parked outside of the school so the kids can actually come at the end of the class and do their homework. I mean, you're talking about basic things that these kids didn't have any, any, any access. And now you see them 10 years ten year later and you see the, the impact that makes in their lives and it's, and it's remarkable. And the teachers, are the ones that now are super committed to make sure that that continues. So when you get the school district, the teachers, the parents, and then the kids all involved in education through technology, then it succeeds. Well, I mean, it's, first of all, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of lives uh, impacted already. Um, and the other thing is, when you're doing real work, you learn real stuff. 
it's easy to talk about stuff, you know, you know, broadband for all, these become slogans, but I think what's extraordinary is that you guys have put real money and real time into figuring out how to make it work. Um, you know, as you look forward, uh, going forward, um, you know, we're wasting a ton of genius. I mean, you know it. I mean, you know, these, some of the young people in the schools that you're touching, I mean, they're literally geniuses, uh, and they don't have a real shot. Um, why is uh, Verizon so committed? I mean, look, you don't have to do this. I mean, you said you want to be a company that does good. You could just make a bunch of money. Why are you guys so committed to doing it the way you're doing it? Well, first of all, is to, going back to the uh, responsibility that we have for a corporation of this size to uh, not have the responsibility and the accountability to actually do something about these big problems, it's a mistake. I think right now the public sector is, is, I think in the way I see it, is divided between the companies that really believe that they have a responsibility and they do something about it, and the ones that they know that they have a responsibility but they kind of like spend a lot of time talking about it, yeah. you know? Uh, in our case, and that's why we don't talk a lot about this program, and I will say to the team, I mean, they, they, this is the team that works in this program is day in and day out. They go into these communities, they work with the schools, they measure everything. In every district that they go and where we select the school, and these are all under you know, privileged kids, schools in, in tough neighborhoods, they always pick a, a, another school that is a control group because they want to measure everything. What happened to the, the students? Where do they go from there? So it is a commitment, but I tell you, right now is the time with corporations like Verizon need to step up. And we as leaders, I like what Jay was saying about uh, leadership needs to be about uh, compassion, but I tell you, when that compassion comes with these issues being part of the way you do business, Right, and becomes part of your strategy as a business, it has a lot more chances to succeed than only being philanthropy, which depends on like whatever the thing the CEO or the CMO uh, you know, cares about. So look, looking forward, um, what's the future? Um, you, you, you put in 10 years, you put in a lot of money, you put in a lot of smart people, you, now you've got hundreds of thousands of success, success stories, but you know, the reason we're here is because there's a lot of kids that are still not being touched, still not being served yet, what do you see as the future for you and for this whole field of trying to get this next generation of kids online? Like in any big issue like this uh, and, and the conversations that are happening here is all about scalability. So we are actually using and looking at technology. We just launched this year something that we call Verizon Innovative Learning HQ, in which now we're going to three million teachers with tools that they can access completely for free online for them to incorporate in their curriculum. So even if we're not touching them yet with the technology, meaning like the actual hardware, teachers can actually take that and put it into practice right now. We're doing the same thing with small businesses, for example. Uh, for, in, in my mind, this is about economic inclusion. If these kids don't get to your point, the shot, now, because they are completely left behind, there's no way that they're going to be successful. And then, you know, and all the problems that come, uh, you know, from, uh, from that. So uh, for us, it's about how do we put the technology to service the community, but also these are our customers of the future. <laughs> you know, so if you, only look, if you look at it only from that perspective, it also makes a lot of sense. Well, I, I appreciate what you're doing, you know, um, at the Dream Corps, the organization I work with. Um, you know, we've been working, uh, building these uh, boot camps where we are finding young people who might be working at a grocery store, might be working at a, at a gym. Uh, so they got a good work ethic. They didn't go to school for STEM. They didn't go to school for computer science. But in a, with a 10-week program tailored to you know, the cultural specificities of those, those young people, we've been able to turn people in 10 weeks uh, into coders who, you know, their income goes up you know, 2x or 3x literally within a, a couple of quarters. Um, there's just a lot of genius out there. And, you know, people, it's not all about, you know, people, you know, privilege. You know, sometimes it's about privilege, sometimes it's just about luck. I mean, some of us got where we are because one coach or one teacher saw something in us that others didn't and made a bet on us and here we are. I think we gotta scale those kind of bets. And, uh, you know, that's what you're doing and I'm very, very excited about, about it. Can I ask you a question? Sure. When you think about the scalability of a Dream Crop Corp uh, tech, mm -hmm. what would be the one or two things that you were looking for? Well, I think that um, I want to take the curriculum that we have now, which is very good, 
is very good, and I want to combine it with historically black colleges and universities and other minority-serving institutions so that those organizations who already have a huge footprint with young people of color can get the kind of curriculum that can supercharge. We need to be turning uh, historically black colleges and universities and other minority-serving institutions into centers of excellence for technology training. If those campuses became uh, those uh, centers of excellence, you could springboard and leapfrog literally tens of thousands of young people of color into these uh, technology fields and change the world. That's fantastic. Yes, give it up. That's good. Hey. All right, thank you. Ah, another you zero. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hey, if, thank you. If, 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 this little clock here starts flashing and telling us to get the heck off stage just when it gets good. But anyway, thank you, guys. Thank you.